This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so this is where we are and uh, in yesterday's session, we were discussing the primary difference between a .NET full framework application and a .NET core application from how it gets built and how it gets restored from a perspective of a restore and build and build and we said that uh, the biggest difference or we kind of concluded that the biggest difference between a dotnet framework <coughs> and a dotnet core application is primarily in something known as a restoration procedure wherein a full framework uses something known as a service called nuget uh, to go ahead and restore its dependencies dot net core doesn't have to go ahead and explicitly download a tool called NuGet. Uh, NuGet now is an internal part or an intrinsic part of the .NET Core, <laughs> the .NET Core application itself. So it doesn't have to go anywhere to go ahead and download the tool and then restore the dependencies. It is a little faster, and also .NET Full Framework uh, is platform dependent, meaning you can only run this application on virtual machines or web applications or any type of servers uh, that are built on a windows operating system while dotnet core is platform independent meaning uh, you do not i mean it doesn't really concern or it's not really concerned about what is the underlying operating system of the virtual machine or the web application on which it is running you can have a mac os you can have a linux you can have send debian windows whatever it is it can go ahead and run on top of it so this is what we are discussing or just i'm just doing a quick recap on what we are discussing yesterday and now let's go into our azure devops and let's see how can we use the knowledge that we acquired yesterday and implement it today out here so i am inside this project right now which is called seven name class project and until a couple of days what we were doing or what i was doing rather is that we went ahead we established we est we basically got an understanding of what are repositories and then uh, we said what is or what are branches inside the repository so a we know what is a repository right now b there are branches inside the repository like develop tech mean and etc and finally we went ahead and said there are something called as branching policies so we also went ahead and established something called branching policies out here so that this we established that this was going to go ahead and protect our branches from let's say uh, from default i mean for from a faulty code quality it's going to go ahead and protect our branches so this is what we really said or this is what we really spoke about until now and as of now <coughs> i have a .NET core application the code that belongs to a .NET Core application and the code that belongs to a .NET Full Framework. I have both of them in my repository right now. And I will now have to go ahead and convert this code and start converting this code into a binary language. And this process, as, as I said, we call this process as a build process and we use a service called as pipelines in Azure DevOps in order to help us build this code. In order to help us convert this code from a very high level language to a low level language, which the server can really understand. So what I'll do here is I'll go here into the pipelines and it has multiple services like pipelines, environment releases and etc. I am interested in one particular service called pipelines here. So I just click on this and it now says, uh, hey, you know what, create your first pipeline, etc." Yeah. So I'll say create the pipeline. Yeah. And now it's asking me, I understand that you want to convert a code from a high level language to a low level language or binaries or DLLs or in Azure DevOps terminology called artifacts. So it's now firstly asking me where exactly is your code? Like how do you want to build your code? Where did you store your code? 
now i know my code is in something called as azure repos git and it's telling me that okay fine uh, do you want to write a pipeline or do you want to design a pipeline now writing a pipeline is the modern way to do it but firstly let's understand how do you design a pipeline to get a better understanding of it and once we get that we'll go ahead and also write our pipeline we'll also basically write our pipelines also so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this button called use classic editor in the bottom i'm going to click this and this is going to take me to the next screen which will again ask me the same question telling me that uh, can you select the source control meaning where exactly is your code is your code somewhere in azure repos git like is it something something like in the azure repository or is it something in a github repository <coughs> is it something in a github repository do you have something called github enterprise server or do you have a subversion all these that you see on my screen are examples of source control or examples of version controls that are available out there in the market so i say i say that okay fine my code is not in github or in the github enterprise and etc my code is in something called azure repos git this is the source control that i use because this is a service called azure repos which i use to go ahead and store all my code in there so i'm now saying okay fine the code is here which is called azure repos git and please look into a project because i have multiple projects out here so please look into a project called 7am class project this is the one that i'm actually looking into please look into a repository called first repository this is the one that i created and please look into a branch called develop branch because i am not working on a main branch in here it's by default taking something called as a main branch but i know that i stored all my code in the develop branch and based upon the project and based upon the branching and merging strategies that i have it is telling me that okay fine <coughs> just telling me that okay fine uh, this is the develop branch and you have all your code inside this so i'll change my branch how do i do that i'll just click here and there are a couple of branches out here that's getting displayed so i'll now select the develop branch from this uh, from this particular drop down and i'll say continue and as and when i do that it's now telling me that uh, okay fine i understand your code is in develop branch but uh, can you tell me what kind of code you want to build like what is the language in which you are building the code <coughs> what is the language in which you are building the code in meaning did you write the code in .NET or did you write the code in let's say uh, Java or Python or Golang or whatever it is which language did you you know kind of build your code in or which language did you write your code in that's what it's asking me right now so in here you have a lot of things for example if i click on java you have a couple of things like gradle and and all that stuff and if i say dot net you have multiple things again like dot net desktop asp dot net and if i go down you have asp dot net core you have asp dot net full framework and etc so i know that i have a code that is built or i have a code that is written in dotnet full framework and i have a code that is written in dotnet core i have two things out there in the same repository out here right now so what i'm going to do <coughs> is that i am firstly going to create a build pipeline <coughs> for a dotnet full framework application and then I'm, i'll go ahead and build i'll go ahead and create a build pipeline for dotnet core application because i have two different ways in which i have written the code and these two different codes needs a different different way to build it out because that's how they are uh, kind of configured and that's how they are uh, written out here and there is a strategy that i need to follow to build each and every kind of a code out here so what i'm going to do now is that i am firstly going to look at this code only which is dotnet framework and i'll say it is asp.net application because it's an asp.net full framework application i know that it's a full framework application so i'll say apply 
and as and when I do an application it went ahead and it created a pipeline for me yeah. all this that you see is the pipeline so let's go ahead and get a little bit of understanding on what this is trying to do so let's do this the first and foremost this is called a stage in the pipeline this is called as a job <coughs> and all these are called the tasks three things basically that construct a pipeline so first thing is called a stage the second is known as a job the third thing is called as a task so stage plus job plus task is going to basically give you this entire pipeline out here so this this is the constitution of a pipeline and then what exactly stage let's understand this in a bit detail so if i click on this stage i have some options in the right hand side wherein the first thing it's telling me what is the name of the pipeline and now it's it just took a random name called 7am hyphen asp.net hyphen ci so what i'll say is that i'll say this is a dot net full framework pipeline So I'm just writing something called .NET full framework pipeline. I'll say hyphen build because it's a built pipeline that I'm kind of creating out here. And the very next thing it's asking me out here is what is the agent pool and what is the agent specification that you want to choose out here? What exactly is this? Like, let's understand this a bit further because this is a very, very, very important concept. So let's understand this a little bit further and I need some inputs from you all guys uh, to explain this out. So I have created this particular application on my local machine, right? Using Visual Studio. So I had this code in Visual Studio. This is the code basically that I have, I have created in my Visual Studio. <clears throat> and once I created this, I went ahead and I clicked on build my application and the process of build here is nothing but conversion of a code from again a high level language which is human readable in nature to a machine language which is called DLL or artifact. Now in our case uh, we are using a DevOps practice in order to convert it out meaning we are not using our local machine. <coughs> We are not using the local machine to go ahead and do the build process. I am just using my local machine in order to go ahead and write my code. I'm not building my code. There is a difference between writing and building the code. I'm using the local machine to write my code. But in order to build it, I am now saying that I will go ahead and use Azure DevOps. But the question, <coughs> sorry, the question now for you all is that if I want to now build my code using my local machine, what all do I need and what should I do now? So I'm expecting some inputs from your end guys. So please go ahead and mute yourselves and tell me what you understand by this. guys i need inputs without that i cannot move forward so once you get the once i get the inputs i'll then start telling you what it is local if you click on project we can build the code in local like by right clicking mm -hmm. so if i click here then i can go ahead and build the application yes so let's say if i don't have an application installed or let's say i don't have a, a software called visual studio installed on my local machine i don't have this then how do i build it out i mean just a situation out here out here so 
so I'm able to build it because I have the software called Visual Studio. But what if I don't have this? Yes, go ahead, guys. Any any inputs here? Compiler. Compiler. So correct compiler, but Visual Studio now is acting as my compiler. Visual Studio out here is acting as a compiler. So you will need the software, right? I mean, you cannot remove the software out of your local machine. So you will need the software. Yeah. And <coughs> this software to be installed on your local machine. Now I'll give you a situation out here is that your local machine has about 256 MB of RAM, okay, which is like very, very, very little. Can you go ahead and install the software? Yes, no, maybe. No. No, right, because this software needs some amount of hardware, meaning I'm talking about a hardware. In my case, I have, let's say, somewhere around 8 GB of RAM and I have one terabyte of hard drive and all that stuff. So I need some physical attributes out here. It's nothing but uh, in the form of RAM, in the form of hard drive or hard, um, yeah, hard drive in the form of memory and all that stuff. So <coughs> I am only able to build the software. I'm only able to build it because I have Visual Studio installed. I have a hardware, I have a hard drive, hardware and etc. And I also have very importantly, in order to understand all my commands, I have an operating system. And I have a Windows operating system, which is capable of building this code. Because it's a dotnet full framework of course so i have a windows operating system which is capable of building this code so all these things is acting like a compiler for me which is going ahead and converting <coughs> which is going ahead and converting this code from let's say a high level language to a low level language out here but i am now telling that i am i'm now establishing a norm that developers are not allowed to build the code on local this is strictly not allowed uh, reason being again you will have configuration issues and, and a lot of issues basically actually come in so that's the reason I am using Azure DevOps right now so I I want to go ahead and build my code on the cloud so I want to do the entire build process yeah. using a cloud tool Called Azure DevOps. This also called ADO for your information. We call it as ADO, <laughs> ADO in short. So ADO Azure DevOps is the same thing out here. And I, I want to do the entire build process using Azure DevOps right now. So if I want to use the cloud, then who is going to provide me this Visual Studio? How am I going to get <coughs> the hardware? And how am I going to get the operating system out here? Because these three things are essential for me, right? These three things are essential for me to build my code. <coughs> but if I go to the cloud, then how am I going to get all these three things? So any thoughts on this one? Anyone, any thoughts on this one? So if I'm moving to the cloud right now, then <coughs> sorry, who is going to provide me all these things out? Uh, Azure DevOps. I'm sorry. It's with the net connection, sir. I'm sorry, can you please go ahead? I'm sorry, I didn't get, the, get your inputs. Uh, can you please go ahead, no worries? 
We use tools in Azure DevOps. Tools in Azure DevOps, okay. Tools in Azure DevOps. The agent Meaning, hosting. agent hosting. Okay, agent hosting. Let's see, agent hosting also. So tools in Azure DevOps, agent hosting, fine. Meaning, in order to put it in a very very simpler term, I need someone or some somehow to provide me something like a hardware. I need someone to go ahead and provide me the OS and on top of the OS I need someone to install the Visual Studio software and give it to me right away. I need all these three things even if I move to the cloud. So what I can do is that I don't have a physical machine on the cloud right now rather I have a virtual machine. We read about this concept or, and we did a lot about this concept called virtual machine <coughs> on which I can install we I mean Visual Studio on which or which gives me something like a hard uh, hardware which also has an operating system meaning I can leverage this concept of virtual machines which is on the cloud like a cloud like uh, let's say Azure install all these things and help me build this code now if i do this this virtual machine is called a build agent or this agent in simple words it's called an agent machine right now and this type of an agent is called self hosted agent why am I calling it a self hosted agent because <coughs> because I am going ahead creating this virtual machine installing the software that I need and then converting this machine into a build server this is called a self hosted agent but what if I don't want to go ahead and create this machine because again I there is a cost associated with it there is some management associated with it etc <clears throat> and I request Microsoft to do this for me if I'm requesting Microsoft to do this for me at let's say a very minimal cost that kind of an approach is called a hosted agent there are two types of things out here one is called a self hosted wherein I go ahead go to my Azure portal create a virtual machine convert it into a build machine or a build agent <coughs> or I get a machine that is ready made for me and this machines or the service is called a software as a service so it's readily available I need to consume it this type of a service is called as a hosted agent out here <coughs> So where do I get it? How do I select it then? Is in here. If you look at this, <clears throat> if you look at my stage, it just asks me for what is the name. Secondly, it's asking you what is the agent pool? Meaning, uh, do you want to go for a self-hosted machine or do you want to go for a Azure hosted machine or let's say a Microsoft hosted machine <coughs> and if I look into this and if I just click on this drop down I have something called a hosted pool which Azure is offering me it's called Azure pipeline agents <coughs> and I have something called as a private agent private agents are a different name for self hosted agents out here so to begin with I will just tell that uh, you know what I just need a Azure pipeline hosted agent this is the machine that I am or this is the service that I'm going for and then it's asking me what is the agent specification and if I just click on this it's just giving me tons and tons of flavors out here but since this is a dotnet full framework application 
I am only interested in something like Windows out here. So here it is telling me VS 2017 hyphen VS 2016. What does what does this mean? Is that <coughs> it will give me or this service is going to give me a Visual Studio 2017 version installed on top of a Windows Server 2016. Or if you want to go for something latest, <coughs> you're going to get something called Windows 2019, meaning a Windows 2019 server with the latest version of Visual Studio or a Windows 2022 server with the latest version of Windows Visual Studio or whichever is the latest that is available with Microsoft. Like at this point, let's say there's only nine, <coughs> there's only 19 with them. They are going to provide you the 19 version of it. So what I'll do here in order to be on a safer side, I'll just go ahead and select the Windows latest. So I am saying that whatever agent that you are provisioning me, meaning Microsoft is provisioning me right now. I'm saying I need it with the latest configuration. So please go ahead and give me <coughs> or please go ahead and provision an agent with the latest configuration out here. This is what I'm just telling Microsoft out here. So this is what the agent face really means. So any questions till here guys, anyone, anything till here? Anyone, any questions before we move forward? <coughs> okay, so <coughs> finally, it's now also asking me one more thing. Is that uh, what do you want me to exactly build? Yeah. And it's telling me it is dot something something SLN, meaning it's doing a star here, which is called a wild card. So it is telling whatever is before a slash and whatever is after a slash with a dot SLN. This is the pattern that I'm looking for. It will try to see whether the extension is a dot SLN and it will try to target that file. Meaning in my case, if I go into my repository, I have a .NET core application also. <coughs> and this .NET core application also has a dot SLN file. And the .NET full framework also has a dot SLN file. So what I'm going to do out here is I'll just select the path of my .NET full framework, which is .NET full framework application forward slash something like this. I'll just copy this out <coughs> and I'll specify this as the path. So I'm just saying um, this is the path. Uh, I don't want you to target something random, but I want you to target one specific solution file, which is matching this particular path. So I am now targeting only my .NET full framework application out here. And this is the main file of the application. This is called as a solution file. Even when you build it in the local or even in let's say when you create it in the local machine, you have the solution file out here. So you click on the solution file and you basically build it out. So I am basically only looking at the solution file out right now. And I'm seeing <coughs> Please go ahead and target the solution file out here. And finally, it is now telling me that, okay, great. Uh, I know that you want me to convert all this code into something called as an artifact. Then how do you want to store or what do you want to do to store this artifact? I will say create a folder called drop. You, this can be anything. It can be ABC, ABCD, something like that. But drop is the, the standard convention what we follow out here. So I'm saying create a folder called drop and whatever the code you compile, meaning whatever the code you have converted, store it in this particular folder called drop on the cloud. This is what I'm telling. And this is called <coughs> artifacts staging directory. You can either call it as drop or in a technical terminology, we call this as the artifact staging directory.
meaning this is the folder inside the vm which vm again it's the agent machine that i'm talking about <coughs> in which your compiled code is stored so this now is called as artifact staging directory out here so please remember this terminology guys because azure devops uh, you in, in azure devops you will start using all this technical jargon out here that's the reason i'm trying to make this introduced to yourself i mean introduced y'all so artifact staging directory is nothing but a folder inside the agent machine and not any folder but one specific folder called as an a folder so i'll explain about what a folders i mean what folders and etc are inside the machine but let i'm just giving you an idea about what happens out there so i'm just calling this as a drop folder and this is all the settings that i'm mentioning <coughs> at the stage level and once this is done there is something called get sources wherein this is the first page that you selected you started here you selected that that sasher repos and etc you can also change it here but i do not want to change it at this point and it it looks something like this and i'll talk about all these options out here but for now you can go ahead and let's say change your project change your repository and do all of, all of those things out here also you can change the repository you can change the branch and etc but i don't want to do that at this point i am good with my source my source is azure repos my project is 7em class project my repository is this one and the branches develop i'm good with this finally there is something called as an agent job what do i mean by an agent job out here is that now you are using a self hosted machine and this self hosted machine needs to perform a series of tasks or let's say a series of work which will help you convert the code into binaries this is what <coughs> this is what the machine has to do and all these tasks which the machine performs are together called as jobs or are together called as a job so this is now telling that okay fine i have something called as an agent job and under the job all these are the tasks that i need to perform to go ahead and convert the code <coughs> to go ahead and convert the code into something known as a dll or the artifact this is what i need to do so i am just mentioning what is the job of the agent and under the job i am going ahead and mentioning what should the agent actually do and if you look at the job out here it has a couple of options called demands execution plan and etc we'll look at it we'll inspect it each and everything uh, but when the time comes we'll do that but as of now i just want to say that you can change the display name of the job so <clears throat> since this is building my code i can say code build i can just give a dummy name to the job out here and it's also asking me what is the agent pool and it's saying inherit from the pipeline meaning whatever it is declared at the pipeline level please go ahead and take the same agent or take the same machine in order to run all these tasks out here this is what it is telling right now and these are the actual tasks so let's understand this <clears throat> or let's understand all these tasks as and when the pipeline is actually running so how do i run this pipeline is i'll just say save and i'll say save in queue and i'll just add a comment that this is the first run <clears throat> and i'll say Save and run. Hello. 
and I'll just say leave this page and right now my pipeline is now running so let me open this in a separate tab <coughs> right now my pipeline is right now running out here and there are a few steps that are mentioned in the pipeline so all these are the steps that are mentioned inside the pipeline which is called use and I mean use dot and use you get and restore and all that stuff we'll look into that in one in, <clears throat> we'll look into that in a minute but all these steps are right now being executed on the cloud All the steps are automatically being executed as and when I said save and run out here. So any questions till here guys? Yeah. So we need to use all the builds, right? Uh, choose one. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get your question. No, no. You, you mentioned NetGate and Net. Uh, you have mentioned all the builds, right? All the builds as in? Uh, so you need, sorry, we need to choose no we need to choose one build or our cold builds you see net get restore and use net 4.41 there are mm -hmm. builds right <clears throat> they're not builds they are tasks inside a build pipeline okay. <clears throat> so they're not build there it is task inside a build pipeline out here just give me a minute I'll just have a sip of water and come back just give me one quick minute guys okay come back okay so these are not uh, build this entire thing that you see on my screen is the build but these are all the tasks inside the build and all these tasks together help me to do a restore build and compile the application and also to compile the application so all this together will help me in one common goal so what does this task really mean out here and if i look at the pipeline run right now i'm able to see that the entire pipeline got successfully executed so what does this really mean so let me go into each and every task out here and let's understand what the task is really doing out here so the first thing which you do not see here is called initialize job now what is it trying to do exactly is that these two tasks are called pre-build <coughs> why are they called pre-build is because i haven't mentioned that anywhere in my pipeline but they're still getting executed and they're getting executed for one specific reason what is that is yes, let's look at this in the initialize job my pipeline is going to Microsoft and requesting for an agent because my pipeline knows that without an agent meaning without a virtual machine I cannot go ahead and achieve all these tasks that is established right so it's going to let's say the servers of Microsoft and it is requesting for an agent machine <clears throat> and Microsoft in return said that okay fine uh, i understand you want a hosted machine so this is the name of the vm is this vm running in your azure portal no if i go into my azure portal this is my azure portal out here if i go here and if i look at the virtual machines that i have i have nothing there is nothing inside my portal so where is this running yeah. <coughs> it is running on the microsoft servers yeah. this is managed entirely by the microsoft it's managed entirely by microsoft 
uh, you cannot interact with this machine you can just use this machine for a temporary uh, or let's say for a temporary point in time so that's the reason <coughs> the first thing or the very first thing that's happening out here is that it's going ahead and going and getting an agent machine with this particular name with any particular name out here and it's just telling that okay fine <coughs> it's telling okay fine the agent machine has acquired and it's giving me the properties of the machine like for example it's telling me that it's a it's a microsoft server 2019 with some kind of let's say <clears throat> version of the operating system which is running on top of it and which is a data center meaning which is nothing but a virtual machine out here and it's just telling me that okay fine i have acquired this particular agent and now i am ready to go ahead and execute your job or i am rather ready to go ahead and convert your code but before i convert the code the reason i am able to do a build out here is because this code exists on my local machine this code exists the entire code definition is there on my local machine somewhere in some path so it's since it's there i'm able to go ahead and do a build process if it's if the code is not there then there is no point in going ahead and doing a build process right i cannot build that is i cannot build which is not present in my local machine already is the same applies to the virtual machine also right if this virtual machine needs to build the code it needs to have the code on the machine itself for that reason the second step is called checkout repository wherein if you look at or if you carefully look at this it's just going ahead and downloading all the code from my repository called as the first repository from the develop branch to a folder called as source directory on the agent now i am talking about two different things out here one i said there is something called artifact staging directory where all the compiled code is stored there is an other folder called sources directory or source directory on the agent machine which is represented by a symbol called s it's nothing but a folder inside the virtual machine where the entire code gets downloaded so the code from a branch called develop branch in a repository called first repository <coughs> is being downloaded onto an s folder or also called as the sources folder or the sources directory on the agent using this particular step once this gets downloaded the code is now ready you can now go ahead and do a build but there is a problem this is a dotnet full framework application and in order to restore all the dependencies that i have i need a tool i need someone called as nuget i need this tool out here so what this pipeline now is doing or what the pipeline now is doing is that it's going ahead into a website called nuget dot something 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 so if i click on this link out here if i click on this particular link all hap that happens is that i get a software called nuget dot exe being downloaded in my local machine so i just clicked on this link and the software got downloaded so what this step on the azure devops pipeline is doing is that it's going ahead into this link called nuget.exe and it is downloading this particular file called nuget.exe on the agent into a folder called c hosted tools windows something like this it's downloading this particular exe file into a folder and it's appending something called a path variable a path environment variable in order to make sure to use this tool 
so firstly it's downloading the tool called nuget.exe a reason being it needs this tool to do a very important step called as restore so it's using the tool that is there right now in order to restore all my dependencies and it's now telling that okay fine the dependencies have been restored and finally after the dependencies were restored I'm now doing a build solution so I'm making sure to build both my dependencies and the code and there's something called test assemblies out here and publish symbol paths publish symbol paths is actually we don't use this task a lot but test assemblies is used to run test cases on something that you have built in my case I do not have any test case right now because I have just created a very simple code without any test cases to test it so even this step doesn't make a lot of sense in our pipeline I have just put these two steps just for the sake of it and once this is done my code is compiled here the build solution is compiling my entire code and all the compiled code is being pushed into something called as the artifact staging directory or the drop location in this particular step so if I go into the step out here all this is doing is that it's uploading the code or it's uploading everything into a folder called drop and finally when I just look at this pipeline this is something that I'm really interested in it says one published and if I go in here it says something called drop and inside this the very important file that I actually want to look at is something called dotnet full framework application dot zip this is all my compiled or this is all the compiled application that I do have right now meaning if I now download this out and if I extract it into my local machine <coughs> it is just going to show me all the compiled application that the pipeline has done so if I just go into the folder if I just go into the folder out here and if I just extract this out and if I look into the extracted folder it's just going to have all the application that is compiled so it has content and it has a lot of ins internal folders inside it and finally I have a folder called bin inside this I have all the application that got converted into something called as a DLLs so you see DLL, DLL, DLL and all that stuff this is the runnable version of my application I get the same output even if I do a build process from my local machine if I do a build process from my local machine I get the same thing again so it's now doing a build and once it's doing once it's done doing a build I'll also take you to that particular folder in order to show you how it looks like so it's now telling me that okay fine this is the folder in which all the build application is there so it is C user something like this so if I now go into that particular folder same thing got built but in a different configuration of course so all these files that you see here are from my local machine this is from the local build this is a local build and if I just compare it with the one that I got from the pipeline the number of files are of course less because I built it in something called as a release configuration we'll talk about that but all the main files that I do have or all the main files that I need now exists as an output from the pipeline so this is the entire procedure of the build and I just have covered how the dotnet framework gets built I have not covered how the dotnet full or how the dotnet core basically uh, gets built so we'll look at dotnet core in tomorrow's session 
that in today's session i just want to establish the basics of build pipeline yeah. in by going through each and every step of the build pipeline and helping you all understand what that is so any questions for today guys any questions till now that i can take anyone any questions till now anyone anything till now and guys please make sure to ask questions <clears throat> please make sure to ask questions if you are not following i am okay to go ahead and explain this again there is no issue with that but the main intention is that you'll have to understand this because this is going to be our core job guys this is as a devops engineer this is the core area where we are working on so please make sure to ask as many as questions if you have anything yeah. and i'll make sure to explain it again if you do not follow it out so anything before we close guys um, kiran like still we need to perform tasks right we need to perform tasks as in like uh, you're saying this is not automated yeah. like build solution test assemblies like publishing it yeah. has to be done for the full framework it, it even it gets done for core also like even for a core application you will have the tasks like build test assemblies and everything the restoration is going to be a little different the restoration only is going to be a little different uh, but i mean this is just a build pipeline it's not a continuous integration pipeline i have not automated it yet so we will have to automate it a, a bit further to make sure that everything is automatically done without human intervention yes okay. okay so any more questions here guys okay so no more for the questions and i'm going to close guys and we'll meet tomorrow at the same time and we'll discuss more on this thank you guys
Yeah. Yeah. See, in this you are sending 